Hi, and welcome to another session of our masterclass product and business plan. Last week, we stopped talking about the operational aspect of uh, marketing as a very important element in the, uh, in the business plan and in the marketing plan, of course, as well. So the uh, operational aspect of marketing is comprised of uh, the four P's being product, price, place, and promotion and we also talked about the different kind of elements it is important to understand that uh, we have a differentiation between b2 uh, c marketing so consumer goods marketing and when it comes to service marketing or b2b marketing business to business marketing so in the um, classic consumer goods marketings consumer uh, marketing we have the, uh, like I just mentioned, we have the four P's and um, as the operational tools of marketing, the four P's. Uh, but for service marketing, we have seven P's. That is important to understand. Um, what are the additional P's? The, um, if you look at, the, at a service, we have additional uh, P's being people, so, of course, the people, when you think about McDonald's, when you think about, um, I don't know, a do-it-yourself market, when you think about a hotel, um, the people can make, of course, a difference. And it is very important to really have a good management and leadership as to the people, as to your stuff, because they are representing your brand. They are representing your company. The people, the service stuff make uh, a great difference to your value proposition. So people and another P is um, the processes, processes or process. What is process? For example, if um, you're buying something at a shop, online shop probably, um, and you want to return that or you're, you're dissatisfied with a product or with a service and you complain, how is this complaint managed? How is this uh, complaint management process coming along is it cumbersome for people to get in touch with the organization to get a feedback from uh, the service stuff etc etc so therefore process is another element of uh, the marketing mix when it comes to uh, services and the final one additional one uh, in contrast to the four p's so the um, service marketing has all the four p's of course as well and in addition three additional piece uh, and the last one being physical facilities physical facilities physical facilities and what are physical facilities that is for example how your um, shops are being designed how is for example um, um, uh, a station a petrol station for example how is it not only designed how clean is it how uh, how tidy is it um what is the atmosphere of the shop like so so this is all physical facilities and of course if you are for example a hairdresser or a saloon um the design of the shop is impacting the perception of quality of the service and now there are researchers like me who are arguing that if you look now at um companies such as Daimler or BMW, Let, let's just take um, companies such as BMW. Is that a consumer goods company or is it a surface company? Um, we need to differentiate here because we have a continuum. So if this is, for example, if this is 0% service and that is 100% service oriented, meaning this is a 100% service company. Maybe companies such as uh, Hilton, as an example, would be a pure service player. But, uh, and um, Coca-Cola would be, I don't know, close to this end probably. Coca-Cola. Um, however, what about companies I just mentioned, such as BMW? Why are they in the middle? They're, they're, they're not stuck in the middle, but they're positioned in the middle because they also have a service component being attached to their business. 
course, BMW is, of course, selling products, consumer goods. However, you have, for example, BMW financial services. So you can uh, lease a car or um, if uh, your car has to be uh, maintained, if it, it has to be serviced. Then just in the name, you have to bring it to the uh, to the dealer and you have it uh, have it inspected. So what I'm what I'm saying, my point is that even potentially um, uh, consumer goods companies, they have a strong element of service within them. And as a result, we have to um, we have to introduce a paradigm shift. We have to rethink marketing, also consumer goods marketing. And therefore, um, some of my colleagues and I, we are suggesting that also for consumer goods, we are not only looking at the four P's. Some people also say, or say, uh, say four C's, like and they have customers, for example. Um, but, but it's the same kind of stuff. But we are also uh, at least have to look at uh, another element, which is people. So people are important also for consumer goods companies. And um, I think we have to look at a, at a, at a broader picture and view of uh, consumer goods marketing. So it is important to understand that this uh, classic marketing mix being aimed at consumer goods companies has to be also um, enlarged by at least one element, which is people management of people and we know that um, for example traditionally we wouldn't perceive amazon to be a, a, a pure service player compared to hilton however like i just uh, stressed amazon also has a key element of service in its um in its operations of course therefore i think we also have to add for the classic consumer goods marketing we also have to add people to this one as well. Now, we talked about the different kind of elements already. Let's quickly touch base upon them. Product policy. What is it comprised of? Um, now, first of all, it is um, important to understand, um, we, and we talked about that before, that before you think about products, before you think about also services, before you think about pricing, um, you have to think about the strategy. And the strategy is comprised of uh, all the uh, management process we went through already. So it is starting with, like I said, we talked about that before, it is starting with the mission of the organization. So. What is the purpose of the corporation? What is the purpose of the uh, of the company? Then you do an analysis of the external market and also of the company itself. So you're looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the organization, and you're also looking at the opportunities and threats that the, the market is delivering upon you. So you do analysis next of internal and external elements. And then this leads into the, um, like we mentioned, this leads into the SWOT matrix. And uh, the SWOT matrix gives a better understanding of um, what we call strategic windows. And then we have the strategy. And the strategy or strategic marketing planning is involving, and we talked about that before, market segmentation. So you, you, you look at the market and then you dividing the market into homogeneous segments. And the goal is then to also look at the attractiveness of each segment and then target those segments, this one, for example, or that one, or that one, which, uh, which you want to be in or where you want to grow pr probably, right? And this is before product, uh, product policy comes along because the logic is here that each of the segments here that you depict, you target with a different four or seven P approach. 
So you have a different marketing mix for each of the segments you're targeting. So um, for example, if you're a smartphone uh, producer, manufacturer, you can think about, okay, to target the old people with completely different products being sold at different prices through different channels, different kind of communication, so less social media, for example, than um, if you're targeting the uh, 20 to 29 year old uh, target customers. Uh, so the digital natives. So that is um, basically, this is involved in product policy. Also what is involved in product policy, and we talked about that already before, is the question also of, uh, of branding, how you build a strong brand. And as well, how many products you do actually need? How many products do you actually need to, um, to be in a certain kind of market? You need only one product or you need two, three, four, five, how many? So what shall be what we, uh, what we call the product depth and the products, uh, product width? And the depth is here, this in this direction. So this is, for example, a product line. For example, when you look at the uh, Apple Corporation, you have here the uh, the mobile phones, and you see you have different kind of mobile phones in here. And um, so that is the uh, the iPhone uh, 12, for example, and you have uh, still selling uh, selling old models, for example, or you have the iPhone um, 12 Pro and you have the uh, iPhone 12 Pro Max, etc. So this is all what we call product um, depth. So this is the number of different kind of variants you have in the product line. So this is, this is called the product line. And uh, then the question is how many different product lines do you need? And this is the product um, depth. I'm sorry, uh, product depth, product width, width. So this is how many different product lines do you need? And if you look at Apple, there's been a couple of a uh, couple of them. For example, um, they have the uh, the iPad, for example. Then they have different kind of models of the iPad, and they have the um, I don't know uh, AirPods. You have um, here AirPods. Am I writing with the Text marker is not very good, um, etc. But you get the logic. So this is also what you have to uh, what, what you have to think about. So brand and the program policy we call it. Pricing. Now, um, of course, there are different kind of pricing strategies. We'll discuss in more depth later on. Just uh, to uh, look at two things when it comes to um, pricing for new products. If you think about pricing for new products, basically you have uh, four strategies that you can pursue. One is called premium pricing. Premium pricing, like the name indicates, over the time you're pursuing a premium price. You're charging a premium price. That is, uh, for example, the case if Mercedes is introducing new S-Class, it's premiumly priced. Um, there, there, that is not a promotion pricing or penetration pricing. Um, on the other, on the other hand side of the spectrum, you can have a promotion price, and we call promotion pricing if you have this everyday low pricing strategy. Um, so you're aiming at uh, sales, at market share. And then there are two very interesting uh, approaches which are opposed to each other. One is called the uh, the penetration pricing. Penetration here, the focus is on penetration. So you want to gain a foothold in the market very quickly, uh, gain enough market share, and then you increase price. So you're starting with a low price, and then over the time, you increase the price. You increase the price after you have enough subscribers, after your so-called installed base has grown substantially. So that, that is, for example, what all the magazines are doing. So if a new magazine enters the market or a newspaper can be also in digital format, usually they have a different subscription model. So for example, when Apple entered now the streaming market, they aggressively price it. So with every product, for example, you have a subscription for uh, the first month for free. 
if you buy an iPad or a new new iPhone, etc. And uh, then as long when they have enough subscribers, when they have more and more subscribers and better content, they will of course also increase the price in the long run uh, and match the price of Amazon Prime Video or Netflix or Hulu, uh, etc. On the other hand side, there is a uh, a strategy which is called skimming pricing you skim the margin so what what are you doing you're starting with a high price for your new new innovation for your new product for your new service because it's new to the market and what you try to do you skim the margin of the customers so you charge a high price and then you lower the price and and, and you're even forced into lowering the pricing why because if you, you if you start on um, start with a high price i have an example here rollerblades or the k2 people um so if you have an innovation like kickboard uh once people say wow, wow that's really cool and there's potentially only one company offering that but then what we discussed everything that works is being copied in an ever shorter period amount of time so competitors are entering the market offering the same kind of functions the same kind of product features at a lower price usually so the the um the market leader who has been first into the market who has this first mover advantage is forced usually to lower the price um and that is what we call uh, skimming pricing so you start with a high price and then you're lowering the price over time so that is uh skimming penetration i talked about that place policy is uh, distribution so how will your service offering reach the customers uh, not only the service of course but also the products and uh, usually the question is how are we selling how are we selling um, are we selling directly or indirectly what is the difference we basically we differentiate between direct uh, direct selling and indirect um, indirect selling that doesn't make any sense indirect selling <laughs> like, like, like that so what is direct selling direct selling is if uh, for example here is the manufacturer and the manufacturer is directly selling to the customers indirect selling is if the manufacturer is using for example um, a retailer or even a, uh, an agent in between to sell to the consumers now what are the big uh, companies doing usually companies such as nike for example they doing both indirect selling and direct selling because they have their own flagship stores in which they sell directly to the consumers but they also have uh, retailers so they selling via uh, i don't know runners point or i don't know kastat spiel und sport um etc so they also have this uh, indirect selling and we call that, and there is a fixed expression for, for that, we call it um, multi-channel distribution. Multi-channel distribution. So that's uh, the right term for that, multi-channel distribution. Now, the selection of the channels depends on whether the, uh, the business appeals to business customers or more to private customers so are you in the b2c arena or are you as a business dealing with other businesses so there's a differentiation of course how large is the number of potential customers and their geographic distribution so are you targeting targeting only uh, a small crowd of people because you have an exclusive service because you have an exclusive product at a very very high price then it is not necessary to have your product or your service being available everywhere does your service uh, of uh, offering require instructions so is it very um uh, is it easy to be explained or do you need really trained stuff to do that and of course as well which pricing strategy are you pursuing skimming or penetration because if you pursue a skimming strategy usually you should not also make um, your product available everywhere a certain kind of scarcity is always adding um, a psychological 
edge to the uh, to the product offering. For example, if you think about uh, Lange and Zöne, uh, the German watch manufacturer, um, they are not having their watches being sold at um, every kind of uh, jewelry shop in Germany, but they are only having very very selective um, jewelry shops in big in big cities because uh, the watches are quite expensive. And of course, you have to think about location. I mentioned that. Um, so let's start with the, uh, with the first element here, the, uh, the promotion. And we talked about the promotion before as uh, one key element of the, um, of the marketing mix. Now, promotion, you see that this is already can be subdivided into further elements. So the promotional mix can be uh, divided into public relations, personal selling. So it's, if you personally via sales stuff, for example, sell to customers, um, advertisement, but all kinds of advertisement. So not only classic TV or radio, but also social media. Sales promotion, so certain kind of promotions you have, for example, uh, you're offering, um, I don't know, uh, certain price discounts, for example, buy two, get second one, 50% uh, off, or direct, direct marketing, if you directly talk to consumers, uh, for example, through uh, catalogs, catalog marketing. In marketing, basically, we're differentiating between ADL and BDL communication, ATL and BDL. It's, uh, it, it's not so obvious. Uh, it is linked to a ship. Basically, we can, we can link it to a ship. And there is a ship. I'm, I'm, a very bad, I'm very bad at drawing. And if this is a ship here, um, and that, that is the water, above the line, ATL, are all the, uh, the classic forms of communication. All the classic. And BTL is below the line. Below the line, it's all non-classical forms of communication. So non-classical forms is basically internet marketing. So all the social media and above the line is all the classic billboards, radio, cinema, uh, print, uh, TV, etc. So that, that differentiation is important. Of course, uh, it always depends on your product, on your service, how you're communicating, how you're communicating that. If, for example, uh, you're Chanel and you want to market Chanel number five, still, of course, a lot of uh, above the line communication is crucial to um, not only to penetrate the market, but to trigger sales. But also you need uh, below the line communication. If um, you have, for example, um, I don't know, uh, a product which is more rooted or targeting the, the, young, the young people, the young generation in the B2C arena, for example, such as, a, uh, I don't know, a smartphone or certain kind of features, then uh, companies usually tend to shift a great deal of their budget into the uh, BTL communication because uh, they can reach more people usually at lower cost and these are basically the options you have so these are the types of media now print we see that uh, across branches uh, that newspapers are becoming less and less uh, effective and less and less important because simply uh, fewer and fewer people, in particular, if you target young uh, young people, are reading daily newspapers. So newspapers are uh, decreasing when it comes to significance uh, across branches in, gen in general. Magazines are still uh, important because with magazines you can uh, precisely target uh, people because there are magazines for everything for fishing and hunting and diving and paragliding and running. So if you place an ad in a, in a, in a magazine for runners, for new kind of, uh, new kind of trainers, that um, you can be very, very sure that uh, you uh, get, uh, get in touch with a lot of potential customers at least. Um, with a newspaper, 
you have much more uh, variation. So there are much more people. So the only also people reading the newspapers who are not running, who are not uh, walking out. Now, uh, so therefore, special interest and magazines are still important. Outdoor, uh, classic uh, billboards, for example, post panels or neon signs. Um, direct advertisement is like I, like I mentioned already. If you, for example, send catalogs to people, which is still done. However, that is also uh, decreasing when it comes to significance, uh, generally speaking. And probably you read about IKEA that uh, IKEA just canceled or announced that uh, this is going to be the last IKEA catalog that will be printed. So the IKEA catalog is going to cease, um, it's going to be discontinued. Letters, emails is another form of direct advertisement. And now what is really interesting is um, a, an electronic media. Radio is a kind of a flat. Uh, television is, uh, it depends of course on, of course, the type of, uh, of users you're targeting. It is still important, it's the most important uh, media. However, what is very, very strongly growing across businesses is uh, new media, social media marketing. Cinema is not uh, is not very uh, is not very important. Again, this depends on the product and the service. So, <clears throat> uh, this is a checklist, um, and uh, I talk a little bit now about business model and operations. That was very very quickly um, something about marketing because marketing we have a special focus on in uh, the, the next sessions of, uh, of a course. But, um, oh, it would be good probably to end at this moment in time with this, at least with this session. So we have um, this video really covering, covering marketing. We can probably quickly go back and run through the uh, checklist quickly um, to look at uh, what do you have to take into consideration in your business plan when it comes to marketing, when it comes to sales. Which sales price can you uh, can you reach? Which pricing strategy are you pursuing? Talked about that penetration pricing uh, or skimming or high price, for example, right, right, uh, or promotion uh, pricing. So premium pricing or promotion pricing. Then, how does your pricing strategy fit with the individual market segments? Remember that you need to design a separate marketing strategy for each of the segments you're targeting. <clears throat> which margin are you aspiring? Are you assuming? Which additional services do you want to offer? Talked about that before. We call that value added or adding services. So that may be warranty, a uh, hotline that is available 24, uh, 24 seven. Which volume? Uh, quantity do you want to achieve in each market segment? So you need to lay down and specify for each of the segments you're targeting, you need to specify goals, of course. Which revenue, so quantity times price, do you want to achieve in each market segment? And what is the relationship like between the customer value and, uh, and the price? Going on, what is the relationship like between the customer value? Okay, we talked about that. Do you want to reach all segments with one product or have segmented oriented adaptions? So that is a clever question as well. Uh, and we talked about that before. Um, of course, if you only have one product and you're targeting with one product, multiple segments, that saves you a lot of cost. But however, then the product or the service is not so perfectly tailored to the specific requirements of the segments you're targeting. Which pricing strategy does your competitors pursue? Of course, important. Which value added services are your competitors offering? And what is the relationship between your competitors and their customer base? So do they have a strong fan base or are they likely to switch between different kind of offerings so if you have, um, I don't know, a better price value proposition, are the people willing to change or are they very, very loyal customers to a specific brand? 
In which market segments will you enter the market? That is the uh, what we mentioned before, the STP, segmentation, targeting and positioning. Which target group of customers do you want to reach through the distribution channels? And how much time and effort you need for the acquisition of new customers as well? What abilities, qualifications and infrastructure does distribution need to have at its disposable? So do you need, for example, outlets? Do you need bricks and mortar stores? Uh, are you selling through agents? Uh, are you pursuing um, only online sales? Are you pursuing multi-channel distribution such as Nike is doing? And how is the customer loyalty being uh, addressed? Another uh, very interesting question. And with which of uh, distribution forms are you reaching your target customer groups? So the question is here, how can you get hold of the consumer? Do you need direct, indirect distribution or do you need multi-channel? So these are the basic questions. You see a lot of uh, so marketing and sales is quite important. Um, I couldn't, couldn't say which is the most important. Of course, pro probably product because product is of course without a product or a service you have nothing to market so you need the product but then also promotion is very very key to communicate your uh, your value add and um, and how far you're different from competitors okay so that uh, is a good time to uh, to stop the recording here because the video is then uh, close to uh, close to one hour and we we covered the marketing uh, in a very comprehensive form so I pause the video, but of course, we uh, will continue with the lecture in a couple of minutes. Thanks very much. Uh, cheers and bye bye.